Amy Trask, of course, my co-host for What the Football, joins us for a little taste of what's ahead in season two of What the Football. Hey, friend, how are you? Well, first of all, two disclaimers. Yeah. If people see like little brown and colored spots all over my teeth, they're sprinkles yeah. because I set up ice cream. And number two, if I start coughing, it's because I have sprinkles in my throat. Okay, I I, we have got a Rich Eisen Show mug right to your right. That's where the ice. That's where the ice cream is. Okay, I'll give you my water. Okay. We can share. You don't have cooties. I don't. Okay, need I don't have right cooties. Up. Um, Jim Nance, of course, is our first guest for the season because Jim Nance asked us if he could be our first guest. And you guys don't get it. It's rare in the world of booking to have somebody say, can I be your guest? Usually you're just yeah, you have to begging beg people to come <laughs> and, on. And you know what? I was so touched that we were the first podcast Jim did after coming off that magnificent Super Bowl he delivered. So he does the Super Bowl. And what does he do next? He joined us on What the Football. That that. Popped my heart. And by the way, you too can listen to that podcast. Just go onto the YouTube page for Rich Eisen Show or wherever you find your podcast and listen to it now because as time has aged that Super Bowl, his call was perfect as it always is. And it was a great conversation. And I'm really looking forward to having more substantive conversations with great guests as we're going to build them out for what the football. I am too. Okay, well, let's start right away. And thank you, by the way, for bringing ice cream. And I say that on behalf of Chris Brockman, who's already eating ice just cream. Just stuffing my are face Are you planning over here. on getting into that birthday cake, or are you going to just let it sit there and you're going to breathe I'm all a little over it? Wait, is it Brockman's I birthday, enjoy- too? TJ and I have the same birthday yesterday. You guys have the same birthday? Yeah. How about that? Should we all sing right now? Not at all. No. Oh, okay. No, I can't not. sing. Although, <laughs> I did a sick set of karaoke until 3 in the morning last week with a friend in upstate New York. And I've decided that... Is- I finally found, after 51 years, my key. And that and key is what? It, it's something. But it's, <laughs> um, I, did a, I did a cheap trick, double set, and Whoa. then a lot of Springsteen. And I think I finally found something. Is there that video evidence of this that I can use? Yeah, Rich has it. Okay, I need that. Rich, I need that video. Oh, it's special. Uh, Ames, let's talk about the most intriguing people in the NFL. Who are you most intrigued by? And I'm going to start. I'm going to, I'll am going give one, you give one. Okay. I'll give one, you give one. Okay. Russell Wilson in Pittsburgh. I agree with you entirely. Um, I would like to see Russell succeed. I don't think he had a real chance to do so in Denver. You know, a lot of people don't remember when he was in Seattle. And look, I get it. It was a number of years ago. But he was not only effective as a passer, there was a year he led his team in rushing. My point being, he did so much more than a lot of people realize. I like him. I'm rooting for him. I'm cheering for his success. I hope he does well. What do you think the combination will, will be like with him and Tomlin? I think that Mike will best position Russ to be his best. I think Mike will use him in a manner that really magnifies his talents. Interesting. Joe Burrow and Cincy. That's the one that I'm kind of waiting to see how things develop as the year progresses. He's been injured. He's been injured more than once. He's acknowledged that. First and foremost, they need to keep him healthy. And a healthy Joe, Cincinnati will be interesting to watch, and that division will be interesting to watch. What do you think of his new hair look? Well, first of all, I did a double take. I, 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 didn't, I read a caption, and I thought they must have gotten the caption wrong because clearly that caption says it's Joe Burrow, but that's not Joe Burrow. And then I looked more closely, and I said, you know what? You do you. For those of you who haven't seen it, it is an unnatural shade of blonde. And it's very tight. He looks a little bit like Eminem. No, very much like Eminem. I agree. A little bit like Beavis and Butthead. Okay, I thought Eminem. I didn't go that direction, but I hear you. But, you know, it's a statement. And we've seen this guy as making a statement for himself, both with fashion and with hair. Sometimes you can say, well, you're calling out in desperation, but I wasn't sure what your take was on that. When I saw that picture that you just showed, my take was... He is focused and he is ready to go. And now he doesn't have to spend any time worrying about his hair. Interesting. I like it. Deshaun Watson in Cleveland. Thoughts on that one? We'll see. Yeah, that's a good one. We'll see. I'm just not sure how that's going to play out. They do say he's healthy. He's all the way back. And we will see. Hey, Mike, can we roll the the sound bite? Do we have Aaron Rodgers yet? Do we have sound ready to go yet? Not yet. But I will be interested to hear what Aaron Rodgers had to say. He showed up at Jets Mm -hmm. camp wearing, of course, an Egyptian uh, T-shirt, very mythical, very interesting. Uh, I feel like every time he's on the field, I'm going to be waiting to see whether he gets down through that set of downs. But 
I think Aaron Rodgers will be one of the most intriguing people on the field this season. Well, he's going to be a big topic in your household, I'm sure. And as I was thinking about joining you today, I was thinking about Rich and I was thinking about Aaron Rodgers. Um, yeah, we're all going to hold our breath watching him each play, uh, you know, to see how's he doing and also worrying about him on that turf. What do you think is going to happen with Jim Harbaugh? Oh, um, I think that was a spectacular hire by the Chargers. If I were a team in need of a head coach this season, I would have pitched a tent on his lawn. And if he doesn't have a lawn, I would have just pulled up in his driveway and done whatever I had to do to get him as a coach. Um, I had the opportunity to see him recently at the Chargers' new headquarters, and I am excited to see what he does. I, You know, look, you know I use this expression that the best coaches – best position their players to be their best justin herbert has never had that in a coach since he's joined the nfl he didn't really have it a lot in college either we didn't see who justin could be until bowl game time i think jim is going to bring out in justin that which i thought when i said draft that man and he's never had that since being with the chargers no one has best positioned him to be his best it seems to me and forgive me if i'm wrong that Jim Harbaugh would be the exact kind of coach that Al would have wanted as a Raiders coach. We had him as an assistant one year. Al loved him. Al really loved Jim. And when Jim came in and told us, I'm going to leave, I have an opportunity to go to USD, a lot of people thought Al would be angry about that. But Al just wished Jim the best, and Al wanted Jim to pursue his dreams. Now, Al did have a funny remark about it when, Al, you know, Jim said, I don't know how you feel about this, you know, but you left to go to college also. And Al looked at him and said, yeah, I went to USC. I didn't go to USD. But the point is, um, I had the opportunity to work with Jim one year and to watch the relationship between Jim and Al. And Al did really, really respect and like Jim. Who's the coach right now in 2024 that Al would hire to be the head coach if he were still there. He may well have stayed with Antonio Pierce as the Raiders did because Pierce had the Raiders playing like Raiders. He had that team playing with a passion that we haven't seen in a while. He may well have gone after Jim Harbaugh. Um, of course, you're saying now in 2024. Um, Do you think he would have hired Belichick if he were available? You know what? He might have. When um, I was only involved in one coaching search my entire career, and you're smiling because you know I love, you know, kids use that expression, humble brag. There is no such thing as a humble brag. Humble and brag, that's an oxymoron. I'm just flat out brag bragging. <laughs> Al had me involved in one coaching search my entire career. He had me meet with every candidate. One of them was Bill. After we met with all the candidates, he called me and he said, which one would you hire? And I said, Bill. He didn't. He went in another direction. Um, hired another good coach. After Bill started performing as Bill did, Al would always say to me, you know how to pick a coach, kid. Who he, was the coach that he took at the time? He took Gruden, who did a very good oh. job. Um, but I thought he should have hired Bill. Hmm. Who do you think is going to be better on TV, Brady or Belichick? You know what? I'm going to say the same thing that I always say when people say, who was responsible for the wins in New England, Brady or Belichick? Both. Both, they're going to be very, very, very different and in different roles because Belichick is just commenting and yakking and talking and analyzing. And Brady's talking with someone in his ear, letting him know you have two seconds, you have one second, go, 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 go. I think they're different roles. Um, I'm excited to see Bill kind of unplugged. When you talk to Bill and he's not with the team, if you're just in a social setting, he's hilarious. I hope we get to see that on air. Amy Trask here on The Rich Eisen Show. Susie Schuster in for Rich. We talked about this to start the show in hour number one. And if you missed hour number one, go watch it on YouTube. See it on Roku. It, it'll re-air all day, which is so great. And then you can take it in however you can take in your podcast. We talked about this to start the show. If CeeDee Lamb will end up getting signed, and he should get paid, and they know that Micah Parsons is another, you know, it's down the, down the road. We know we've got a coach that they're wondering about. We know that we've got a quarterback they're wondering about. If they're going to sign CeeDee Lamb, for you, from your perspective as somebody who signed these checks, why don't they just do it before camp so that everyone goes in feeling really good and positive as opposed to seeing their number one guy 
staying home or not getting on the plane to Oxnard or not showing up day one? Well, I guess I'll answer it in a couple ways, which is you're absolutely right. If they are going to pay him X, whatever X is, and if they're not going to hold firm and if they're not going to get a better than X deal, if they're paying him X, then why would you wait? If you're going to pay him X, pay him X and get him to camp. But they have a real problem because you just nailed it, Susie. C.D. Lamb, Micah Parsons, Dak Prescott, they've got a lot of players do. And they may be prioritizing that. I know if I were prioritizing this, and this is not an ill intent towards C.D. Lamb, he is magnificent, but I would prioritize Micah in terms of money over that given his position, and they've got to decide what they want to do with Dak. And you mentioned the head coach in his last contract season. I'm not sure they will bring him back. I think that depends on how they do this year. Wow. Yeah, I mean, I just feel like it it seems to me, and again, I'm not the one doing the numbers. As we all know, I don't do numbers. But it just seems to me that if you, you know, Jerry wants to win, right? He's made it very clear. He said when he won number three, he asked the good Lord for number three and said, I wouldn't ask for any more, but he wants more. It just seems to me like a very strange move to go in with this many questions unanswered. Well, you know, you are absolutely right that Jerry wants to win. And I remember when we discussed this on What the Football, there was a lot of pushback. Does he really want to win? Does he really want to win? Or just he just care about the branding and the money? Look, I worked with Jerry during my years in the league when I overlapped with him during his years in the league. Um, he wants to win. I'm telling you right now, people who say Jerry doesn't want to win or Jerry doesn't really prioritize winning or Jerry doesn't really care about winning, that's wrong. He does want to win, and you're right. They've got a lot of contracts to work out. What are the biggest questions that you have as we sit here in July looking ahead towards the 2024-25 season? Well, you've named a couple of them. Um, I do have my eyes on Russell Wilson, and, you know, that's not from an intellectual standpoint as much as I really just hope he does well. I've got my eyes on the AFC West, and yeah, I know, I know people will say, of course you do, you spent 30 years in the AFC West, but that's not the only reason. You've got the Kansas City Chiefs coming off a Super Bowl win, hoping, wanting, working towards another Super Bowl. We just talked about the Chargers, Jim Harbaugh, they went out and hired the coach that I think every team needing a coach should have been lined up trying to hire. The Raiders brought back their interim coach, Pierce, who now will be in his first full year, and as I said, He's got the Raiders playing like Raiders with a ferocity and and a vim and vigor that we haven't seen in a while. And now Sean Payton's in his second year in Denver, and he's got more of the pieces he wants there. So I think there's a chance the AFC West can be far, far more competitive than a lot of people anticipate it will be. Do you want to go on record by saying who you think will be in the Super Bowl? Hell no, it's July. Uh, I'm not done with the beach. Do you see this? Beach, please. Beach, please. Too early. I never, ever, ever will say ahead of time. I'll never uh, look ahead and pretend I've got a crystal ball and tell you who's going to be in. I think that is so stupid. You're an well, injury away. I mean, thank it's just like, you. And I know people love to, like, prognosticate or what have you. I mean, back in the day, I used to do the gambling segment at ESPN for Hammering Hank Goldberg. Uh. And oh, I know right. when I was a the kid, memories. like when I was 24, right? And every every week I would do his hammering Hank segments, and I'd get him ready and doctor it up, put it on TV. And at the end of every season, he would send me Joe Stone Crabs as a thank you, wow. which is the funniest thing. And we'd sit around in Bristol, sitting in like the conference room, this giant thing of Joe Stone Crabs would come, and it was like a thanks, kid, for doing a great job, blah blah, blah hammering Hank. And he can prognosticate, God bless him, but I never do because like. How the heck do I know? Someone gets hurt. Like, you wanted the Jets last year? Four How'd that work out in, for Right, you? right. You know what? I wanted, and I didn't do this, and I want everyone here, Brockman, everybody, TJ, just understand, I had you in mind when I didn't jump out of this chair to go hug Susie, because I would have knocked everything over. I would have knocked the microphone. <laughs> Del Tufo would have been mad. So but I wanted to jump out of this chair and hug you when you said every single team is one injury away. You're absolutely yeah. right. That's why gambling and prognosticating, you don't know. Look at Aaron Rodgers, perfect example. Oh, look at Joe Burrow last year. I mean, Bengals had such high hopes. He goes down, that's it. And pretty, that can happen to any, yeah, team any team on any play in any game. 2008, I mean, the Patriots just went undefeated, and Tom Brady, five minutes in the game, season's over. Didn't make the playoffs. I mean, I know they won 11 games with Matt Castle, but they did not make the playoffs, and, you know. 
they had a chance to potentially. Look, we do I, it again. I don't even know what you're talking about. 2008 Patriots. What? I don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> The last year. You know, we played a game. We beat the Bengals in a playoff game in the L.A. Coliseum, and Bo Jackson yeah. was injured. The next weekend, we go to play another game without Bo. Um, very different if Bo's still there. Bo mm-hmm. said, after the game, it's just a hip pointer. I'll be fine. Well, let me tell you something. Never played football again. My sister-in-law, a doctor, was in the stands. And after the game, she says to me, you need to be very, very concerned about avascular necrosis. Whoa. So I go to the office that night after the game, and then I'm in there the next morning. The original and doctor, Twitter doctor. Um, well, I'm sorry? <laughs> she was the original Twitter doctor. Well, so we, we go, and we're in the office where we've got our trainers there and our doctors there, and they're all, it's fine, it's fine, it's just a hip pointer, it's going to be fine. And I said, has anybody considered avascular necrosis? And they all look at me like, you know, just go back to your office. You know, you're, you're, you're not a doctor. You don't play one on TV. Wow. It was avascular necrosis. My sister-in-law, Marcella Flores, diagnosed it from the stands. That is insane. That's a mic drop story. Yeah. So Meanwhile, sad. they look sadly, at you like, get was, out of there. Yeah, sadly, she was right. Yeah, one of the ultimate what-if careers. Right. For Bo. Meanwhile, you kind of played a doctor on TV, but in the locker room. They must have looked at you like, what the hell are you talking about? I think about? they were all trying to look up what's avascular necrosis. That's so crazy. Amy Rich saw this yesterday on the internet and said, this is Amy Trask in an image. So let's just put this image up. I want to show you. It says, did your human break a treat in half and try to pass it off as a whole treat? You may be entitled to compensation. <laughs> the law office of Hound, Wolf, and Chase. That's attorneys my co-counsel. Paw. My co-counsel. Now, what happens when people break a treat in half? I mean, is Dogs that... know. Dogs they know, know, right? Now, when I give dogs treats, if they're not dogs that are part of my village, I will always ask their person, can I give a whole one? Sometimes the person will say, you know what, we're a little bit worried about weight, just break it in half, and then they'll think they're getting a whole. So I, I'm mindful of that. But the dog that you're showing there, and I love that that Rich, you know, dog wearing a suit. noted the dog yeah. counsel. Yeah, that dog's wearing a suit in spectacles. <laughs> That's my co-counsel. We represent everybody pro bono publico. Are you wolf, chase, or hound? No, I'm Amy, and I'm co-counsel oh, oh, with Hound, co-counsel, Wolf, and Chase. Hound, Wolf, and Chase. <laughs> By the way, that is the best name ever for a law firm. I would absolutely hire on retainer Hound, Wolf, and Chase. And, you know, there's a legal theory, pro bono, where you represent people at no cost, and I call it pro, not bono in Latin, but, you know, a bone, like a dog bone. Pro oh, bono. Bon- oh, bon- get it? Oh, publico. Oh, and it's not pro bono. The real expression is pro bono publico. <laughs> But I do it publico with my co-counsel. See, that's how you just twist this your This is why words. you go to law school. I mean, this is for, why. For, for dog memes. Yeah, that's exactly. Oh, and also dog because memes. I did the New York Times crossword puzzle last Sunday. Did you do the whole thing? Oh, every single word because I even got post hoc ergo propter hoc. Oh, goodness. After the thing, therefore, because of the thing. God Thank you, you, Mom and Dad, for law school. God bless you. <laughs> what did you just say? I mean, Rich does that every week, by the every day. It's so insane. Um, I can't, I'm barely getting through the mini, by the way, <laughs> which is kind of embarrassing. I, Susie Schuster in for Rich Eisen, the great Amy Trask of CBS, but also of what? The football here with me. Yeah, and, and before we get to, to hearing from Aaron Rodgers, I wanted to just double back on the most intriguing people of the upcoming NFL season. When we talked about this yesterday uh, offline, TJ, I kind of started jotting some names down. And just off the top of my head, I knew that you kind of did the same. So let me just throw a few more names out to you guys that we didn't mention and just see what you think about this. I wrote down Saquon Barkley. I am super intrigued about what's going on there because we saw how Philadelphia ended the season last year. They were 10 and one and then were suddenly an unmitigated disaster and lost uh, a playoff game that they, they shouldn't have. And so they go out and get Saquon Barkley. They take him from a division rival, which as we've seen on hard knocks, which has been unbelievable. I don't know if you're, you're caught up, Amy, but the Giants' hard knocks, I mean, the Raiders would have never allowed something like this, I'm sure. I looked at your front office during the offseason, but it's been great to see the team building. They kind of wanted to keep him. And John Mar really wanted to keep Saquon, but they let him go to a division rival. What has he got left? You know, he's an older running back with a lot of injuries, with that Philly offensive line now, a new offensive coordinator, Jason Kelsey gone. I think it's He's a really intriguing player this year. Oh, he becomes one of the most exciting players on that entire team. And also, you know how I feel, Chris, about underval- undervaluing a running back. Right. I could and hug that makes you again. me so upset. I could hug you again. Um, look, the running game sets up the passing game. The passing game sets up the running game. For people who undervalue the running game, a quarterback's best friends, well, there's two best friends, the defense 
and the running game. Because if your opponent has to focus on shutting down a running back, that's less attention they can play, uh, you know, pay to your receivers, to coverage, to deep coverage, to rushing the quarterback. you got to stop the running back. Look, it's math. It's 11 on 11. And if you're having to devote men to stop an effective running game, you've got less men to do other things. By the way, Brockman... When you mentioned about the Raiders doing hard knocks in season, let me tell you how that would have gone while Al was alive and I was there. The league would have maybe called and said to Al or someone in the organization, we want to come in and do hard knocks. Within a second, my phone would have rung. Tell them no. (laughs) Click. That would not have happened. I was sure she was going to make a Saquon Barkley joke. Oh, oh my God! That. See, I'm not that. I'm Do not that fast. Susie. I was so waiting for I'm it. Not, I'm, see, I'm not Jump that quick like you are with the jokes. I will say about Saquon, I appreciate that he admitted he's going to have an edge when he plays the Giants. Yeah. Um, we hear all the time from players and coaches facing their former team. Yeah, it's just another no, game. It's, it's just a, no, it's not. How many times I sat there listening to a player or a coach say to the media, "Just another game," and then he'd walk away from the mic and he'd look at me. Of course, <laughs> it's just not. And if you're the Giants and you know this, to have them go within your own right. division. What else you got, Brock? You know, TJ. Here's one that I thought that I, I think you're going to appreciate. I think Anthony Richardson is one of the most intriguing players this year because if you listen, if you listen to all of the kind of offseason stuff and a lot of it is kind of fantasy driven, but people think this guy could be could have the CJ Stroud breakout and, and could be that two way threat the Jalen Hurts breakout. The guy played like three games and change and barely finished any of them last year. But at one point he had what 18 fantasy points in like six minutes. This guy could be. Uh, an absolute superstar in this league and the Colts could be a top seed in the AFC or, you know, he could catch that injury bug again. And we're all kind of wondering what if, and did the Colts, you know, reach taking him uh, two years ago? I- I'm really intrigued by Anthony Richardson. And- well, of course you are, because let's face it. We have no idea what to expect from him. We yeah. It's ba- all potential. It's, like, it's all like, like barely seen highlights. Him. He's got that prototypical he's giant, giant body. Yeah. He's going to stand back there if he's healthy and sling it. But we really have no idea what to expect from him. And they've got to find a fine line between coaching him to be his best and be the player he is. He's a Cam Newton type, but but maybe more athletic. But also to not putting his body in harm's way as much as he does. And that's a fine line because he is the player he is because of how he plays, but he plays in a manner that puts him at greater risk for injury. We had that conversation on What the Football last year about, I think it may have been Tua, when Tua had to learn how how to fall He had to learn how to protect his body as he went down. And he he went and got coaching. And I think it was jujitsu or some other Uh, martial art. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, And he played every game last year. How to fall down, how to protect himself going down. Yeah, paging that same coach to go to uh, to to Indy. What else you got? Oh, just the last last one really quick. You mentioned Russell Wilson, but I want to stay in the the AFC South. Stephon Diggs. I'm really interested in him. Leaving Buffalo, obviously there was something going on there, maybe between him and Josh Allen, maybe not, but it was clear that he needed a change of scenery, and now he goes to the surprise breakout team of 2023. Uh, we got a young quarterback. They have a lot of fun, scary weapons. They have Joe Mixon now. Uh, they have Tank Dell and Nico Collins broke out. What is going to be his role? Is he there to be number one? Is he there to be the third guy, we don't really know. Uh, we know he can be temperamental at times, and I think he's a really intriguing player this year, Stefan Diggs. I've yet to meet the wide receiver who's not temperamental <laughs> at times. Great I've point. always said this throughout my career in the league, which was that was the one position, as a general rule, not every single one, but there were a lot of temperamental wide receivers. Um, you know, I thought there was a nice comment coming out of Houston where they were asked some of the points you just made about, yeah, he can be temperamental, he had problems in Buffalo, and they shut it down and they said, he's here, he's one of us, he wants to win, and I think it might be a happy home for him. Yeah, you can say all those things in June and July, and then it's October and you're struggling or he's not getting the ball enough, and suddenly it's a bit different story, but you're right. I- I'm, I'm so curious to see how this is going to play out because if you look at the absolute upside, why can't they go... 14 and three and suddenly they're the road to the Super Bowl goes through Houston. Well, I think that's a great point. And I'll tell you a, a, an analogous scenario is I've got my eye on up in Detroit. 
Was that a blip last year that Detroit did what they did, or are we going to see Detroit continue to do right. better? Nobody expected out of Houston what we saw last year. Nobody expected out of Detroit what we saw. Well, I shouldn't say nobody. Maybe they expected it in Detroit. Well, and they just paid Jared Goff like he um, is one of the best players in the I, league. I'm and sorry. I think you meant to say Jared Goff out of Cal Berkeley, Golden Bear Jared Goff. Isn't that what you meant to sorry, say? Sorry, I, I misspoke. Jared Goff out of Cal Berkeley got himself uh, paid like one of the best players in the league where he's a different player on the road. So... Uh, it, this has got to be the consistency throughout the whole year, 17 games home and away for them. And like you said, is it going to just be, oh, that was, remember that fun Detroit season? Right. That was really cool. Or are they really here to stay? And I think, and the reason I brought that up is I think it's very analogous to what you pointed out yeah. about Houston. Maybe they will go on a run and, right. you know, have another terrific season. We'll see. And same with Detroit. Amy Trask here on the Rich Eisen Show. Susie Schuster in for Rich Eisen. Aaron Rodgers has spoken. He has spoken at Jets camp. We're going to go now and listen to this. When asked upon uh, why Egypt during the mandatory minicamp, why did he go? Yeah, you know, I, I originally scheduled it based on the previous year's schedule, uh, which had us out, I believe, by the 9th or 10th. So once I saw the schedule, I was trying to move some things around. It just didn't, uh, didn't happen. You know, back in... Uh, some of the doldrums of the rehab i thought it'd be fun to put together a trip with some friends and uh, we wanted to plan it kind of middle middle of june looked at the previous year's schedule and felt like i was going to be safe is it your uh, participation throughout the spring were you surprised at the reaction from people that you know you weren't there those two days of mandatory well mandatory? you know it's like i said on the on big cats podcast they're ota days they, they happen to be labeled uh, as mini camp, it's not the same as it was in 2005 or 2010. Um, the schedule is uh, an OTA day. It's labeled as mini camp, so you can try and get anybody who hasn't been around uh, to be there. Yeah, I had a great talk with Robert. Um, obviously, he wanted me to be there, and uh, I knew the consequences if I wasn't going to be there. Um, the reaction is what it is. What were the, did you get fined? Yeah. Yeah, I didn't seem too concerned about uh <laughs> yeah. about the reaction. The thing that bothered me the most, and I'm looking at this from the perspective of having been with the team, and then just from the perspective of a human being. He said he looked at the schedule and he figured based on last year I should be okay if I plan it right. How about picking up the phone? Or if you don't want to talk, texting or emailing, or do it as a DM on Instagram or a X, and asking the organization, hey, I'm planning a trip. These are the days I'm targeting. Am I clear to go? It's called communication. He made his plan, and he said, I thought, you know, looking at last year's schedule, I'd be okay. Why didn't you contact the team and say, hey, I'm planning a trip with friends. These are the days I'm eyeing. Am I okay? One of three things could have happened. The team could have said, no, you're not okay. We've got a camp then, or a, yeah, a mini camp then. Pick another day. He could have picked another day or said, eh, screw it. I'm going to stick with these days. Or the team could have said, you know what? We don't have dates that are hard yet. Let us know your dates and we'll plan around them. Absolute failure to communicate. Amy, it's one thing if he had gone through a full season with a new team and it was a summer and as a veteran quarterback, that's one thing. This guy has played no time. Wouldn't you have imagined, as a veteran quarterback, that you would have wanted to be there to mingle with your guys, to coalesce, to be show them that you're a team player? And to show them that when you said, we're not going to tolerate distractions, you also meant, I'm not going to do anything which causes a distraction. But the thing that bothered me the most, Susie, absolutely, you want to go to Egypt, go to Egypt. You want to go on a venture with your friends, go on a venture with your friends. All it would have taken is communication, pick up the phone, call someone with the team, I'm planning an excursion with friends, these are the dates I have in mind, are, are we clear? Can I go on those dates? If they said, we don't know, at least you've alerted the team that you're not available those dates. All right, I, I can't believe that I have to defend Aaron Rodgers. But, well, I defend him a lot, too, in other instances, not in this one. But he was at the 10 practices before, right? And, and why didn't the Jets just say, 
Oh, okay. That you're going to be gone this time. All right, we'll make the ones that you're going to be here oh, I, mandatory, and then the ones that you're not going to be here. Those are going to be kind of the voluntaries, and it's not a huge deal. Because I may, Robert Sala just feels like made such a big spectacle of going out there and being like, "Oh, well, they're unexcused, and he's going to get fined." Like, what was that for? Well, I he agree with star you. star players differently, and like, granted, he only played four snaps, but this guy is the most famous and a most important player on your team. Like, let's kind of move the goalposts a little bit for the guy. Well, I do agree with you, and that's why I'm saying if he had communicated with them ahead of time and said, I am planning to go, and these are the dates I'm planning, they could have done exactly what did, you just though, said. right? He probably did. You shouldn't, Chris. Just because he's one of the most famous guys, no, he no, should no. lead you by example. You absolutely should. Bill I Belichick think you're totally told wrong. the story that Bill Parcells told him, hey, look, Lawrence Taylor's showing up a little bit late to the meetings. What do you want me to do? Yeah, why, but he's Lawrence Taylor. Why'd you start the meeting without him? But he's Lawrence Taylor. I don't buy the theory that he called the team ahead of time and said, because if he did, he would have been at his press conference saying, I called them. I told them these were the dates I was planning. You're absolutely right. If he shared that Maybe. with them, they could have denominated those voluntary days. I just think what I'm saying here was, what was that movie? What we have here is failure to communicate. Yeah, mm-hmm. What was that movie? Oh, that was Paul Newman. That was. Um... That wasn't a few good men. No, no, no. That's you're right. It was Paul. Uh, it's Paul Newman movie. Uh, I don't know why I'm drawing a blank here. Um, yeah, what well, we continue. have here. I'll, I'll give it to you. It's right. failure to communicate. Cool and Luke. Cool you're, and you're, Luke. Yes, yes, yes. Cool nicely Luke. done. Good pull, you guys. I, I, I so I whatever. agree with you, Brockman. The, yeah. the team could have adjusted around him. Absolutely, but you got to communicate to make sure that happens. I know once the season starts, this is a whole giant nothing burger, but it just seems like this was what if they get off to a good start, 100% is. avoid. I mean, they obviously have a hard, super hard schedule, yeah, but this and, was so avoidable, yeah. And Lawrence Taylor didn't miss a whole season, okay. Aaron Rodgers had more uh, to I say, mean, he's been suspended for lots of other things, well, <laughs> yeah. but when he played, he played. okay, all right. Uh, Aaron Rodgers went on to talk about the reaction that the internal uh, reaction to his trip to Egypt was in his absence. You know, I made it a point to be at every OTA. Um, you know, I was at the, the physical day as a part of the mini camp. Uh, I missed the two uh, two practices. You know, had talks with all my teammates about it. I think they understood it was obviously more of a, an issue outside the building than it was inside the building. Robert and I are great. Um, we had great conversations throughout the off season. Had a fun one last night in his office till later on. So. Um, you know, it is what it is. I, you know, I'm an adult. I knew what I was getting into. I knew the fine that was coming and also knew how much I wanted to be uh, uh, to be in Egypt. I wish there hadn't been a conflict uh, scheduling-wise, but, um, you know, it was what it was. Did he say late night in Robert Sala's office? Was there, Were there a giant-sized ice cubes and, and perhaps a bottle of top shelf tequila going down with the two of them let's make it into a bigger story than it is well i think he's right it is a bigger story outside the building than it is inside the building that's how those things are and again i just chalk it up to failure to communicate effective communication he could have changed the dates effective communication the team could have done what chris suggested and jiggled and made that one not mandatory people the four most important words in business communicate collaborate cooperate coordinate yeah, you love those. I do. Mm-hmm. You do love those a lot. Um, we have a lot of calls to take because when I sit in the chair, I don't like to leave people on hold. A yeah, take them. It's kind of like a pet peeve of mine. What's your pet peeve? Football or not football? Go first, not football. Not football. Um, okay, you're in a business meeting. There's a discussion going on. And by the way, this happened all the time in NFL owners meetings. Someone says, you know, I have nothing to add. And then they go on for 20 minutes. The worst. Dude, you just said you had nothing to add. We're 20 minutes into your monologue and you're still going. That's a pet peeve. Here's another one. Can I give you another one? Please. People that talk on speakerphone in places where other people, whether it's a restaurant or a coffee spot or people talking on speakerphone in a public place. It's a bad move. It's a bad look. By the way, someone did something so, so, so smart. I was at a coffee spot. Very, very quiet. Everybody just having their coffee. And a group of people are sitting around a table with a speakerphone, having a big meeting, loud, annoying everyone. And on this speakerphone meeting, they decide what they're going to name their business, their startup that they're starting. Guy sitting next to me looks at me. He goes, watch this. 
he went on and registered the rights to the name that they agreed upon. So having now annoyed the hell out of everybody the entire time we were there, this guy did what I thought was brilliant and snagged the name and registered it before they could. That is next level. <laughs> That's awesome. He then says to me, eh, I'll give it up to them. I'm like, oh, no, you won't. No, you won't. No, you won't. If you're going to give it up to them, I'll take it. That cost him 0.1 cents a year on GoDaddy. Yeah. I mean, come on. I thought it was brilliant. What's your football pet peeve? The expression, my guy. I got to get my guy. I need my guy. If you are brought into a team as a new GM and you've got a spectacular coach, um, let's say, for example, Sneed decides to leave the Rams because he's going to go be a senator or run for office or travel the world. And I'm not suggesting he will or he should. And I love him and he should stay and they should want him to stay. He but might want to go jump off a bridge into cold water, but I don't okay, think he's going to run enough. for office. It's, a, it's an example. I'm not suggesting Rich is leaving. Um, Les is rich. Um, he's not leaving. I don't want him to leave. He's magnificent. But let's decide he left. They bring in someone else. Well, you know, I'm going to move on from uh, the coach because I need my guy. You need your guy. You've got a spectacular coach. Worry less about having your guy than having the right guy. You're brought in as a GM of any team. You've got a great head coach. I don't care if he's not your guy. Is he the right guy? That's another one that kind of relates to another pet peeve before we take a break. Um <laughs> Reporters and hosts and like local anchors who refer to the players by their first names like they're buddies. <laughs> like, find that kind of irritating too. It's a deep well of things that irritate oh, me. Poor Rich. Can I tell you something? I have a list of football pet peeves. It's like this long. I might publish it at some point. All right, season one, uh, season two of What the Football? We could do a whole show on pet peeves. Mm, okay. Okay. Will you bring ice cream? I will bring ice cream. <laughs> Aim, good to see you. It's been good a while. Good to be here. Thank you for having me. Always. I'm leaving all the ice cream. Well, Chris will eat all of it in one Jeez, sitting. No, He'll be sick please, to his stomach. Throw it out. Yeah. Chris started the show <laughs> with like his, his shirt unbuttoned, like three buttons down with like gold chains yeah, and the whole like thing. That. And I, I noticed you changed your look. Probably a good call. Catch the Rich Eisen show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern, for free.